Well, I'll tell you what. This is one of the most exciting times of the year to be a calculus student. We're going to tackle a topic tonight called Volume by Revolution, and we're going to focus on using something called the DISC method. And we're going to start to create some three-dimensional shapes like the one we have in front of us. And besides the colors, um, hopefully you can kind of start to visualize the three-dimensional image. Um, we won't necessarily use the z-axis like you see being created here, but we are going to create three-dimensional objects and therefore find the volume of them. And like I said, now there there are going to be stressful moments because the you know the you know the, the, these problems are going to be hard. I'm not going to lie about that. But if every once in a while, if you can just kind of pause and, and reflect and look back on what you've accomplished um, when you solve these problems, I think you'll really, really take, start to take a lot of pride in what you're doing and, uh, and just enjoy uh, the fact that we are finding the volume of such obscure, fun-looking shapes like the one we have in front of us here. Well, my first attempt at introducing tonight's topic is, is I want you to consider the region bounded by uh, y equals e to the x from negative 2 to, say, uh, positive 2 here. Um, and what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you could take that particular region right there and I want you to revolve it. And I'm going to put a little spinny symbol here. I want you to revolve that region around the x-axis and just spin it. And um, so that's going to be our major theme tonight is we're going to create a region and then we're going to take that region and we're going to revolve it around either the x-axis or a line parallel to it. And then actually we'll finish the night by revolving some things around the y-axis and that's going to get a little crazier, you know, or a line parallel to the y-axis. Uh, but what's happening here, and, and this is a very tough one for me to try to explain or, or to show you here, but um, you'd, you'd kind of create like a, almost like a trumpet's horn um, by the time you revolve this object around the x-axis. It's definitely three-dimensional. That's key. That's key. So, and once you, if you were doing two-dimensional objects, we're going to discuss area. But now that we're doing three-dimensional objects, there's no longer a discussion about area. Everything's about volume now. And uh, you know, as we go through the video tonight, I'm going to try to show you some pictures that give you a good visualization of what we're attempting to find. So you probably wondered when we were doing the area between two curves, why we even wasted our time talking about those thin rectangles, those infinitely. Uh, numbered really, really, really skinny, thin rectangles. Well, because we're building up for moments like today and over the next couple of weeks, we're going to continue to put our energy into those rectangles. And so what we've got here in this first picture is I've got, you know, this blue region bounded by some exciting curve. And I want to revolve that blue region around the x-axis. So what we're doing, instead of being overwhelmed by the entire object, what I want to do is I want to just draw one skinny rectangle and try to isolate that rascal. If I had the capability of grabbing this rectangle and spinning him and revolving him around the x-axis, what that rectangle is doing is it's creating a disk, okay? Um, or if you're not real familiar with that word, maybe think of a frisbee type of object. You know, something that's solid in the middle, solid throughout, and it's circular around its outer rim. And this other object over here, this other picture does a nice job, I think, of showing it. We've, we've got some function, and we want to take the area be, between f and the x-axis, and we want to revolve it. And so you can see the curve kind of getting reflected over the x-axis, but we're, you know, creating more than a reflection. We're revolving it around, and we get this disk. So what we have right here is a disk. And what we're going to talk about today is the area of that disk is, well, because it's a circle, the area is pi r squared. And we could say that the height of our rectangle represents the radius. Okay, so let's put that in our notebook. The height of the rectangle that we're going to draw represents the length of our radius of our disk. Okay, that's very, very important. The height of our rectangles represent the radius of our disk. Now, what we now have is, but the disk does, it, although it's very, very thin, it does have some thickness to it. And the thickness that you see right here at the top of the disk or on the side there, the thickness is delta x. And once that thickness gets to a certain point where it becomes so thin it's hard to measure, we just call it dx. And that's where the calculus notation comes into play. So we could say the volume of that disk is its area times its thickness now, so that just represents one of the disks, and what we want to do is we want to take this region and we want to chop it into an infinite number of really thin rectangles, thus creating an infinite number of really thin disks, and the volume is now going to be, okay, and here's where the integral comes into play, the integral from A to B is the 
act of adding the volume of each individual disk together. Now you notice we do have a constant there. We're going to factor the pi out or slide the pi out. So the integral from a to b of pi times, whoops, 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 let's get that erased. That's The pi got pulled out, my bad. Um, integral of r squared with respect to x, that's the volume of revolution around the x-axis or any line parallel to the x-axis. So we're going to call this the disk method or the disk formula right here. Again, just one more attempt at trying to show you a good visual image of a three-dimensional object here is I want you to imagine a curve f and you know between starting at x equals a and ending at x equals b and all we're going to do is we're going to take that curve and that region between the curve and the x-axis and we're going to revolve it and you can see the little spinny symbol right there revolve it around the x-axis therefore creating this rather interesting shape you know it might be a nice base uh, for some flowers or something like that uh, you know some of these objects are hard to visualize or hard to describe but they're certainly exciting to look at especially with uh, you know the aid of some technology well, I want to go over some key steps here, and, and perhaps on my checklist here, I've overlooked the most obvious key move, and that's the first thing I want to drive home is just, let's make sure we know the formula. If we don't know the formula going into tomorrow, we're going to have a pretty slim chance of being successful. So let's make sure the volume by the disk method is pi times the integral from a to b of r squared with respect to x, or in some cases it will be with respect to y. Some key steps is we got to come up with a great sketch of the bounded area. The, the sketch is going to really help you determine the appropriate bounds, you know, as to far as, you know, who A and B are. Um, we do want to indicate the axis of revolution, you know, whether it's the x-axis or the line y equals 1 or the line y equals 2 or whatever it might be. Um, indicate the axis of revolution. We want to determine the length of the radius of the disk. And all that is, that's another way of saying find the height of the rectangle that we're going to draw. Okay, drawing that rectangle is mandatory as far as I'm concerned, okay? To receive credit on any quiz or test or spiral that I administer, uh, drawing the rectangle is mandatory. That is not an option, okay? It, no rectangle, no credit. And then once you get that done, we're just going to set up a beautiful integral to find the volume of the particular object that we're trying to visualize. So uh, here's a rather exciting moment. This is the first actual live problem we're going to attempt here as far as finding the volume. And uh, um, like I said, it's a very exciting time to be a calculus student. Um, so when I sketch the, the graph here, and we know radical x, uh, you know, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 4, comma 2. So we've got this function right here. And um, we're bounded by the uh, line y equals 0, which is the x-axis here. And the line x equals 4. So we've got a very nice region here. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to revolve that region around the x-axis. So I want to set up an integral to find that volume. And even though it's very hard to visualize what this would look like, it would kind of be like um, a cup uh, with a very pointed bottom, unfortunately. So I'm going to draw that rectangle. And like I said, I, this is very mandatory as far as I'm concerned. Now the height of this particular rectangle right there is simply going to be, think upper minus lower. The top edge is radical x. And the bottom edge is the, the equation y equals 0, so it's just radical x. All right, so here's our formula now. We've got pi times the integral from 0 to 4. Remember, start at x equals 0, end at x equals 4. And it's going to be your radius squared with respect to x. So actually, not that radical x was that scary, but it just got even easier because by the time we square this puppy, we get just good old x. His antiderivative is going to be 1 half x squared, bounds of 0 to 4. What I like to do is I like to leave the 1 half pi or pi over 2 out front. I'll plug in the 4, then I'll plug in the 0. I ended up with an answer of 8 pi uh, units cubed. And I don't know what the units are, but if there was units, they would be cubed because, again, we're describing volume. So 8 pi would be the volume of that shape up there. All right, now before we jump into our second problem, I just want to go over um, one of the keys to a disk problem, all right, and it's something I haven't really emphasized tonight today that when you're doing a disk, that rectangle that we draw, the rectangle will be sitting on, directly on, the axis of revolution, okay, and what's going to happen tomorrow 
is things are going to get even crazier tomorrow. Tomorrow, the rectangle won't actually be sitting on the axis of revolution. There's going to be a gap between our rectangle and the axis of revolution. And that's what we're going to graduate to a method uh, called the washer method tomorrow. And just to give you a very brief snapshot, just so we can compare the two methods, tomorrow our rectangle is going to have a gap between itself and the axis of revolution. Okay, so everything we do today, that uh, rectangle will be sitting directly on the axis of revolution. And once you find the problem where it's not sitting or touching it, um, then we've got ourselves a washer. All right, so we've got about two examples left that I really want to get to tonight. And uh, I want you to consider the region that's bounded by the curve f of x equals 2 minus x squared. And also the line g of x equals 1, or you can simply say y equals 1, nothing fancy about that. But then the trick is we're going to revolve it around the line y equals 1. So we're going to kind of get away from the x-axis. Um, and then we got, and I'm going to show you how to ask yourself whether it's still a disk type of problem or not. So... Um, you know, feel free to grab one of those sticky pads and get another nice graph in your notebook here. And 2 minus x squared uh, starts here at 2, opens down. The roots are plus or minus radical 2, which aren't really that important this time. Uh, we also have the line at y equals 1. So I've got this particular region right here. And they want me to revolve it around the line y equals 1. So we're spinning it here. I'm going to draw my rectangle here that's mandatory. Now you ask yourself, is it really a disk type of problem still? Okay, well the question becomes, does your rectangle sit directly on the axis of rotation? And the answer is yes. Okay, emphatically yes. The rectangle is sitting right there, sitting directly on the axis of rotation. If they wanted me to take the same region and revolve it around the x-axis, there would be a tremendous gap there in the middle, and it would no longer be a disk type of problem. So anyway, how long is the radius going to be? Um, let's see if we can nail this one here. The height of that rectangle, always think upper minus lower when you're trying to find the height of a rectangle, and it's going to be the upper curve, which is 2 minus x squared minus 1. And if I combine like terms, I'm going to end up getting 1 minus x squared for the length of my rectangle. So my radius is going to be 1 minus x squared with respect to x. I've got my pi out front. Okay, so here's my volume. The only thing I don't have is the bounds. I need these intersection points. And all we're going to do for intersection points is we're going to set those two curves equal to each other again. 0 equals x squared minus 1. So plus or minus 1 are the intersection points. And so we'll integrate from negative 1 to 1. Now one of the things you'll notice, oh, oh goodness, goodness, I forgot to square the radius. Okay, there's your radius and we got to square it. So the first thing we would do is we would foil this puppy out. Um, but what I was about to say was because of the symmetry here, um, everything from negative 1 to 0 is equivalent to the regions from 0 to 1. I'm going to cut the bounds in half and double my answer. So let's say pi times the integral from 0 to 1, double the answer because of the symmetry, and then we'll start foiling. We got 1 minus 2x squared plus x to the fourth with respect to x. And then we'll just integrate each term and start to plug in some bounds. You'll notice we do have perhaps the friendliest bounds in the history of math. So I got x minus 2 thirds x cubed plus 1 fifth of x to the fifth and bound 0 to 1. So plug in the 1, plug in the 0, and bada bing, bada boom, you've got yourself a great volume. Okay, on our last problem for tonight, things are going to get significantly more crazy here. Um, so but the first things first, let's do our best to uh, sketch the region that they have uh, laid out here for us. And we want to sketch x cubed which we know behaves kind of like this. Uh, we've got x equals 0, which is a fancy way of saying the y-axis. So we've got the axis right here. And then they also wanted me to graph y equals 8, which is across the top here. Um, so we've, got, we've identified our region. And then they want to revolve that sucker around the y-axis. So we're going to identify that on our graph. And now, here's where things get crazy. And we need a huge asterisk here in our notebook. Okay, the rectangle that you draw has to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation, okay? That is 
Uh, that, that's something that has to be true each and every time. So my rectangle here is going to be a horizontal rectangle. All right. And it's maybe not as thin as I wish it was, but we'll fill it in there so it gets the job done. Now, you'll notice what's special about this rectangle. It's a horizontal rectangle. And once you go to horizontal, everything has to be in terms of y. All right, that's huge. Everything has to be in terms of y with the horizontal rectangle. So what we want to do is we want to grab this function and I want to solve it for x. So that would really say x equals the cubed root of y. And so we talk about the length of this rectangle right here. It is actually the cubed root of y units long. Okay, in that case we're doing right minus left, right edge minus left edge. The left edge just happened to be zero, so it's cubed root of y minus zero. So as I go to set up now, the formula is still going to be the same. It's still pi integral from a to b um, radius squared dy now. And the bounds, a and b, have to be in terms of y. So we're going to start with y equals 0 and extend up until y equals 8. So let's see what we got here. Volume equals pi integral from 0 to 8. And it's the cubed root of y quantity squared. So, uh, let's see, that's really y to the two-thirds. So if I integrated, whoops, 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 let's get rid of the integral. I'm actually going to do the integrating here. Um, let's see, that would be y to the five-thirds times three-fifths with bounds of zero and eight. Hey, eight's not a bad number to plug in here. I'll tell you what. Um, let's continue to pull the three pi over five out front. Substitute the 8. Cubed root of 8 is 2. 2 to the 5th is 32 minus 0. All right, not too bad. So I'm feeling like 96 pi divided by 5 units cubed. And, and, and I'm just putting the units cubed to emphasize that it is volume. That's not required on the AP exam unless, of course, they gave you units like centimeters or feet or something. So that was our last problem for tonight. I just want to emphasize a couple of key things, and let's revisit them before we depart. Is um, Your rectangle has to be perpendicular to the axis of rotation, and if it's a horizontal rectangle, everything has to be in terms of, you guessed it, Y. So things get a little crazier, but it's not bad still. All right, good luck tomorrow, and we'll see you.